So this bar graph here tells us bubbles blown by each gum chewer. We have four different gum chewers, and they tell us how many bubbles each of them blew. So what I want to do is I want to figure out first the mean of the number of bubbles blown, and then also figure out how, how dispersed is the data. How much do these vary from the mean? And I'm going to do that by calculating the mean absolute deviation. So pause this video now. Try to calculate the mean of the number of bubbles blown. And then after you do that, see if you can calculate the mean absolute deviation. All right, so step one, let's figure out the mean. So the mean, the mean is just going to be the sum of the number of bubbles blown divided by the number of data points. So Manuela blew four bubbles. So she blew four bubbles. Sophia blew five bubbles. Jada blew six bubbles. And Tara blew one bubble. And we have one, two, three, four data points. So let's divide by four. And so this is going to be equal to four plus five is nine, plus six is 15, plus one is 16. So it's equal to 16 over four, which is 16 divided by four is equal to four. So the mean number of bubbles blown is four. And I can do that. Let me actually do this with a bold line right over here. This is the mean number of bubbles blown. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out the mean absolute deviation. Mean, let me I'll do it right over here, mad. Mean absolute deviation. And what we want to do is we want to take the mean of how much do each of these data points deviate from the mean. And I know I just used the word mean in twice in a sentence, so it might be a little confusing. But as we work through it, hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense. So how much does Manuela's, how much does Manuela's, the number of bubbles she blew, how much does that deviate from the mean? Well, Manuela actually blew four bubbles, and four is the mean. So her deviation, her absolute deviation from the mean is zero. Is zero. How much did, and actually let me just write this over here. So absolute deviation, that's AD. Absolute deviation from the mean. Manuela didn't deviate at all from the mean. Now let's think about Sophia. Sophia deviates by one from the mean. We see that right there. She's one above. Now we would say one whether it's one above or below, because we're saying absolute deviation. So Sophia deviates by one. Her absolute deviation is one. And then we have Jada. How much does she deviate from the mean? We see it right over here. She deviates by two. She is two more than the mean. And then how much does Tara deviate from the mean? She is at one, so that is three below the mean. That is three below the mean. So once again, this was two. This is three. So she deviates. Her absolute deviation is three. And then we want to take the mean of the absolute deviations. That's the M in MAD, in mean absolute deviation. This is Manuela's absolute deviation, Sophia's absolute deviation, Jada's absolute deviation, Tara's absolute deviation. We want the mean of those, so we divide by the number of data points. And we get 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 over 4. 6 over 4, which is the same thing as 1 and a half. Or let me just write it in all the different ways. We could write it as 3 halves, or 1 and a half, or 1.5 which gives us a measure of how much do these data points vary from the mean of four. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Wait, I thought there was a formula associated with the mean absolute deviation. It seems really complex. It has all of these absolute value signs and whatever else. Well, that's all we did. That was just a, when we write all those absolute value signs, that's just a fancy way of looking at each data point and thinking about, well, how much does it deviate from the mean, whether it's above or below. That's what the absolute value does. It doesn't matter if it's three below, we just say three. If it's two above, we just say two. We don't put a positive or negative on it. But just so you're comfortable seeing how this is the exact same thing you would have done with the formula, let's do it that way as well. So the mean absolute deviation is going to be equal to, well, we'll start with Manuela. How, much, how many bubbles did she blew, blow? She blew four. From that, you subtract the mean of four. Take the absolute value. That's her absolute deviation. And of course, this does evaluate to this zero, to this zero here. Then you take the absolute value. Sophia blew five bubbles, and the mean is four. Then you do that for Jada. Jada blew six bubbles, the mean is four. 
And then you do it for Tara. Tara blew one bubble, and the mean is four. And then you divide it by the number of data points you have. And let me make it very clear. This right over here, this four is the mean. This four is the mean. So you're taking each of the data points, and you're seeing how far it is away from the mean. You're taking the absolute value, because you just want to figure out the absolute distance. Now you see, or maybe you see, four minus four, this is, maybe this is in a different color, four minus four, that is the zero. That is that zero right over there. Five minus four, absolute value of that, well, that's going to be, let me do this in a new color. This is just going to be one. This thing is the same thing as that over there, and we were able to see that just by inspecting this, this, this graph or this chart. And then six minus four, absolute value of that, that's just going to be two. That two is that two right over here, which is the same thing as this two right over there. And then finally, our one minus four, that's negative three, but the absolute value of that is just positive three, which is this positive three right over there, which is the distance, this distance right over here. You divide it by four, you get 1.5 again. So hopefully you found this mean absolute deviation example as interesting as I did.